Hello, and welcome back to Mommy and Carson. Um, today I want to talk about my follow-up of anxiety and panic that I had a little over a month ago. It was actually New Year's Eve that put me in the hospital. Um, I had did a New Year's Eve vlog, and um, in that video, basically, at the end, I kind of explained what happened, but not so much really. Um, so New Year's Eve was just a regular day, um, regular night. We were hanging out, having a good time. And then all of a sudden I was said to Chris, I need to go to bed. Um, so I came upstairs to lay down, but my heart was racing so fast and I was, I was panicking. We were watching, um, Criminal Minds and it's one of my favorite shows but something within the show triggered me um, if you watch that you know that there's like a lot of gory and like crazy episodes <laughs> um, so I guess that triggered me to start like thinking all these things and then um, basically I went from anxiety of the show and my thoughts to panic mode. And when I mean panic mode, I mean uncontrollably shaking. I felt like I was going to die. My heart wouldn't slow down. The baby um, was moving like I've never felt before in my life. I mean, tumbling and twisting. And all I could think is, is the baby okay? Is the baby okay? Um, so I said to Chris, you need to call 911. And he's, why are we calling 911? And I'm like, listen, I don't feel right. Something's not right. So he called 911, ambulance came, um, they checked me, my vitals, everything were normal, which was really good. And of course, when the ambulance got there, I kind of calmed down, I guess because the presence of medical professionals, I, I felt safe, I felt comfortable, um, because if something happened in that moment, they would know how to react to it. Um, <clears throat> so I refused to go to the hospital with them, but then once they left it happened again and I was throwing up, I was shaking, I was, could not control this panic whatsoever. So um, I text my mom at about 11.15, uh, 11 o'clock maybe, and asked her if she can come over because Carson had already been sleeping and we had nobody to stay with him and we didn't want to wake him. So she came over and stayed with Carson while he slept and Chris took me to the hospital. So I got fully checked. Um, they put the monitor on the baby. He was absolutely fine. Um, and the nurse there was really great. So she kind of was talking to me about different things. Honestly, I probably wish that they would have admitted me just because I knew that this wasn't the end. Um, so fast forward. We're home. We said Happy New Year in the car ride home from the hospital. It was a really quick um, hospital visit. You know, there wasn't really much they could do for me because they can't give me anything and whatnot. So the next day, um, home, Carson's napping. Chris says he's going to go to ShopRite. And I'm like, this is great. Thank you so much. He goes to ShopRite. I'm cleaning, trying to keep my mind busy, putting things away, getting rid of all the Christmas stuff because, you know, it's New Year's Day. <sighs> and then all of a sudden it hit me that I was by myself. And what started to make me panic was that what it's it's anticipated anxiety that I get sometimes where I'm concerned like that. Oh, my God. What if what happened last night happens right now and I'm by myself and the baby's in the room and I'm not going to know how to, you know, control this. And what if the baby wakes up and I'm, I'm by myself? So I start texting him like, are you almost home? Are you on your way? And um, our shop, right? You don't get really good service. So I was not getting a response from him. So I started freaking out. Um, I wound up calling my doctor, my OB, and she really was the sweetest. Um, I'm a new patient here for this pregnancy at this doctor because we moved, um, but they handled my situation 
really well and made me feel important and comfortable and safe. Um, so she talked to me for a little bit and she told me that she wanted to see me the next day when she was back in the office and to come at around 11.30 is she don't care if I have an appointment, she will still see me, just come to the office. So I went in and we talked about everything and long story short, because I know I'm rambling here, um, basically was to put me back onto medication and obviously it wasn't something that I wanted to do, but the doctor explained that the benefits of me being on the medicine um, outweigh the risks. So they put me back on a very low dose of um, Lexapro, five milligrams. And if you've ever been on any of these medications, then you know that basically um, it can get worse before it gets better. So um, obviously that happened to me. Um, so it took me, uh, it's a little over a month now, and it probably took me a total of four weeks to get adjusted on the medicine and to actually start feeling like myself, where I wasn't obsessing over thoughts or having my anxiety or anything like that. So, um, I've been wanting to record this video for a while, but again, because I wasn't a hundred percent, I wasn't comfortable talking about this. So it was something that um, I knew had to take a little bit more time before I actually shared all of this with you guys. But present day, I feel amazing. I'm back working. I'm back driving by myself. I'm okay to be alone. I'm okay to lay in bed and nobody bother me. I, I'm back to my old self, um, laughing, telling jokes, making fun of everything that I can make fun of. Um, but I'm happy that I went back on the medicine and I know that there's so many like mixed opinions about being on medications while you're pregnant. But just like my doctor explained, if you turned out to have um, gestational diabetes and you needed to take medication, would you take it? You would. If you had high blood pressure during pregnancy and you needed to take medication, would you take it? Yes, you would. So the same goes for having anxiety or panic disorder. If you need a medication, it's okay. This medication, you know, or these kinds of meds, um, they're serotonin inhibitors, so they're, they don't affect the way you feel. They're not something that makes you feel any different. It just kind of balances you out to where you're supposed to be. Okay, guys, so... You can see my clothes have changed. After recording this entire video, I realized that I did not share with you guys other things that I did other than taking medicine to help me cope with my anxiety and panic disorder. So um, one of the biggest things that I also did, and I think it's really great for anyone that's dealing with anxiety, is guided sleep meditation. Um, you can listen right here on YouTube. There are a lot of people that do it, but my personal favorite is Michael Seeley, and I will link one of uh, my favorite guided sleep meditations below for you guys to check it out. Um, I also did during the day meditation, they have pregnancy meditation, believe it or not. Um, I tried yoga at home because I was not comfortable going anywhere during this time. Um, so I did some yoga at home. Um, a lot of praying. I mean, these things also contributed to me feeling more like myself and getting better. So it was not only the medication, um, and it also took a lot of support from, from my family. My husband um, was a 100% supportive of me, um, did everything, took care of the baby. I, I He let me lay in bed <laughs> and just kind of get my mind right and get myself right because he knew that I needed to get myself better. Um, so these are just a few things that I wanted to share with you other than just talking about the medicine. Okay, resume. Um, so I'm really happy that I started back on it. And basically my message to um, all you moms who may be pregnant or new moms is that if you're feeling like that, that's no way to live. 
and you should really seek the help and you shouldn't be ashamed or embarrassed. Um, it's something that's not often spoke about. So I think as women, as mothers, as even men, like for anybody that's experiencing it, I don't, I feel like it's not something that society talks about or makes it any type of positivity out of it. And, um, it's a positive thing for me, um, to be on this because it's helping me get through my pregnancy. And after sharing, um, a lot of my stuff on social media about my anxiety and my, you know, issues that I've been having or whatnot, so many moms, so many women have reached out to me women that were on the same medicine that I'm on or different kinds. Um, so many women that are struggling and, you know, they're just grateful that I was able to share my story and talk about this because it made them feel more comfortable to go and seek help. So just know that whoever you are, whatever your situation is, you are not alone and getting help is the first step and it's the best thing for you. Um, so please, please do that. Do not think that there is not a light at the end of the tunnel because there absolutely is and you deserve to be happy. So that is my little story. I'm feeling so much better. I'm so excited. I am currently 29 weeks pregnant. My belly is growing, the baby is moving, um, and basically we should be expecting this little guy within 10 weeks or less since I am scheduled for a C-section on April 20th and couldn't be more excited to meet him and see what he looks like. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you already know, please give it a thumbs up. And leave a little comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And um, I will also post below the link to my New Year's Eve video. And um, all my social media stuff, Instagram, where you can follow me and see updates on everything going on in my life. From pregnancy to anxiety to motherhood to a cranky toddler that doesn't want to eat his food. So I'm... Glad to have you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you on my next video. Bye. <music>